It is about 9 a.m. in Ruifang, the seaside district close to 40 kilometers northeast of Taipei, and fishermen have just returned from the sea. Their catch, ribbon fish, caught off the coast of Taiwan. In the East China Sea, these fish can grow more than 2 meters and are a popular dish in Chinese cuisine. They are mainly sent to mainland China, says Huang Qiming, who heads the Ruifeng District Fishermen's Association. The catch today is pretty good, he observes. Almost 500 kilograms. But there is a cloud of uncertainty over their future. It was only last March when China lifted a ban on ribbon fish from Taiwan, a ban that coincided with the then United States House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taipei months earlier, affecting products from over 100 Taiwanese exporters. There are fishermen starting to say, today the Chinese ban ribbon fish, tomorrow they might ban groupers or pencil squids or everything else says Huang. Then the fisherman will really have no clue about the future. That is why he thinks the fishing community might be more inclined toward the Kuomintang KMT in Taiwan's presidential election next Saturday. Since the opposition party communicates better with mainland China. We don't understand politics, but we want to secure our livelihood, he adds. For some voters, China's assertiveness has helped them decide otherwise. The ramp up in China's military flights around Taiwan, for example, has not gone unnoticed by aviation enthusiast Eric Chan. There were 380 incursions into Taiwan's air defense identification zone in 2020 and nearly one. 630 incursions last year. The more the CCP Chinese Communist Party oppresses Taiwanese, the more united the people of Taiwan become. This, in turn, becomes an encouragement to a certain political party. Says Chon, 54. He is referring to the incumbent Democratic Progressive Party DPP, which has been in power since President Tsai Ing-wen took office in 2016. The party a strong proponent of Taiwan nationalism and autonomy, will be represented by William Lai Ching Ti, 64. Opposing him is Ho Yuih, 66, from the KMT, which last held power between 2008 and 2016 and is regarded as the more Beijing-friendly party. The third option, the Taiwan People's Party TPP, founded in 2019, is headed by former Taipei Mayor Ko wen 64. For a while, the TPP had considered forming an alliance with the KMT. But the talks collapsed. As the campaign period kicks into high gear, both China and the US may be looming large in voters' minds, the program insight finds. And the question arises, will the Taiwanese elections be about choosing between the two powers. For their part, the candidates have made their respective parties' platform clear. Lai, who is Taiwan's current vice president, will continue Tsai's four commitments, starting with a commitment to a democratic constitutional order. Says the DPP's international affairs director, Vincent Chow. The second commitment is to ensure that Taiwan and China aren't subordinate to each other. The third commitment is to resist encroachments on our sovereignty or annexation. The fourth commitment is that the future of the Republic of China will be decided by the 23 million people here on Taiwan, says Chao, using the island's formal name. Because of the DPP's position on cross-strait issues, the KMT says a vote for the incumbent is a vote for war. Knowing that, presidential candidate Ho has put forward the 3D strategy. Says political scientist So Chendong, a foreign affairs advisor to the KMT. First, deterrence. Taiwan must enhance its self-defense capabilities, reducing the adversary's willingness to invade and discouraging hasty warfare. Second, dialogue. 
the candidate advocates promoting cross-strait relations between the people of the Taiwan area and the mainland. Third, de-escalation, continuous interaction in functional matters between the two sides will help de-escalate future risk. TPP Secretary General Cho Taichu, meanwhile, tells inside his party can't just look plainly at the relationship between Taiwan and China, we also need to look at global relations. Caught in the middle, we need to also consider America's feelings when we're handling the cross-strait relations, he says. As the US-China relationship evolves, Taiwan needs to find a balance in between. But this balance could become increasingly difficult to maintain, as Beijing still considers Taiwan a renegade province, and Chinese President Xi Jinping has not ruled out the use of force in pursuit of reunification. It has always been a difficult balancing act, regardless of who's in power in Taiwan, says J. Michael Cole, a Taipei-based senior advisor on countering foreign authoritarian influence at the International Republican Institute. We've had the administrations that lean closer towards China, and that was also difficult for them, because ultimately, the only guarantor of Taiwan's security is the U.S. From the DPP's perspective, the U.S. is very important for Taiwan, says Chow. Our job is to ensure that we have clear lines of communication with the U.S. We have a high degree of mutual trust and respect. The party's second concern is to ensure that interests and values remain closely aligned. He cites democracy and freedom as what's guided the baseline of our values in past years. In terms of interests, we share a common interest in ensuring stability and peace here in the Taiwan Strait. With US-China relations on shaky ground, however, some voters believe that Taipei's growing ties with Washington are provocative. One of them is Feng Qianshan, whose family tree in Taiwan spans nine generations and whose forebears came from China's Fujian province. The 64-year-old communications professor at the National Changchi University NCCU is a member of a group of retired and active academics who advocate for Taiwan's autonomy while maintaining an equal distance from China and the US. Taiwan's been strengthening its military and purchasing a lot of military equipment, he notes. This increases the hostility of cross-strait relations. We feel that this isn't a good thing for Taiwan and for both sides and the world. The US is using Ukraine to weaken Russia, this is what Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has said himself. If the US has such plans, we'll be worried if they use Taiwan to weaken Beijing. Why should we be your proxy? Most Taiwanese, however, view the US more positively than China, by a margin of nearly 2 to 1, the Pew Research Center found in 2020. Younger Taiwanese are especially likely to favor closer ties with Washington over Beijing. And young voters, who helped carry Tsai and the DPP to a landslide victory in 2020, just after the pro-democracy protests in Chinese-ruled Hong Kong, could play a crucial role again in the coming elections. Wilson Chen, a third-year student majoring in political science at the NCCU, was in high school when he saw what was happening across the street. Age 22 now, he will be voting for the first time. I feel China is governed by one person, and we're unsure what his next steps are. The US is democratic, we are certain that the elected leaders will follow the will of the electorate he says. But with China, you won't know what their leader will decide to do tomorrow. If the KMT hopes to win, the party cannot ignore the youth bloc. Indeed, in September, Ho visited the US and during his visit called the country Taiwan's sincerest ally. Visiting the US seems like a norm for Taiwan's presidential candidates, observes Wang Yelich a political science professor at the National Taiwan University. It's almost as if 
to tell the Taiwan voters loudly that the U.S. acknowledges me and is supportive of me. And at least has no objection, he says. The original thinking behind the trip, shares so, is to convey the candidate's personal stance and to illustrate Taiwan's willingness to take on our responsibility in the Indo-Pacific region so as to enhance U.S.-Taiwan relations. Yet, there are voters who tire of the two-party system and the U.S.-China dichotomy. This is where the TPP offers an alternative. Although the party is trailing in the polls, Ko is popular among those under the age of 40. This is because Ko is rather straightforward, says Wang. He's very different from other political personalities, from the usual stereotypes of a political personality. The main point is that many youngsters admire Ko's style of doing things and personal charisma. For many voters too, it is domestic issues that weigh on their minds, especially with Taiwan's sluggish economy. They are faced with an increase in the cost of living, for example. While inflation in Taiwan is by global standards relatively low, the 2.95% hike in prices in 2022 was the highest on the island since 2008. More recently, prices rose 3. 0.5% in October, a 15-month high. The government tried to manage the price of public utilities as most of the public utility companies are state-owned, notes Christy Su. The director of the Taiwan ASEAN Studies Center at the Changhua Institution for Economic Research. We've frozen, for example, the electricity price, gasoline price, and that helped stabilize the prices. Housing, however, remains expensive. According to the government's rent index in June, rents in Taiwan were the highest since records began in 1981. Driven up in part by speculators, high property prices coupled with low wages are pricing young voters out of homes of their own. Take, for example, Fresh graduate Tim Huang from Taichung City, who just found a job in Taipei. Food and rental costs here are high, he says. When your income isn't so high, you only manage to save a little. Under such circumstances, it might not be quite possible to buy a property in Taipei City even after 10 or 20 years. The presidential candidates have put forth plans to raise wages and control prices. The DPP's Chao cites several initiatives Lai launched previously, such as regulatory changes for startups, including relaxing some financial restrictions and building regulatory sandboxes. The second part is to really ensure that we can bring some manufacturing back to Taiwan as well. Particularly, high-end precision manufacturing says Chow. The KMT's whole has proposed a three-element policy, the first of which is pay rises, cites so. This has to be done through tax reduction, so the companies that can offer their workers a pay raise will receive tax reduction. Second, workforce housing. All enterprises with land are encouraged to build workforce housing. Third, helping the disadvantaged through tax reduction. According to the TPP, both its rival parties must be held responsible for the issue of low salaries. If Taiwan wants to improve her economy and living standards, you need to let every industry and field prosper. Says Cho. Our focus is all on the technological sectors now. However, we also need to pay more attention to the traditional industries in facing its economic challenges. However, Taiwan cannot escape the turbulence of global power rivalry. The recent ban on the island's agricultural and fishery products illustrates how China has flexed its economic muscle. But this has had limited impact on Taiwan's overall gross domestic product because agriculture accounts for a very little share of our exports, says Su. Instead, the pressure could be coming from the US and its CHIPS Act. 
which restricts the sale of advanced chips built with underlying American technology to China. Some chips made by Taiwanese firms fall into that category. It's something that U.S. officials, trade officials and thinkers are also trying to navigate to reduce the impact on Taiwanese companies because it makes absolutely no sense for U.S. sanctions to hurt their ally in Taiwan. Says Cole. As a solution to the challenges on both sides, all three parties in Taiwan want to diversify the island's trading relationships. If we have to face possible economic sanctions from mainland China, we'll have to increase our competitiveness, says the TPP's Cho. When our products are competitive, even if we don't sell our products over there, we can still sell them to other regions. One of those regions with investment opportunities is Southeast Asia, says the DPP's Chow. We need to create incentives for businesses to look elsewhere. But we need trade incentives. And this is why the Tsai administration, over the past eight years, has had a robust focus on bridging new trade deals with important trading partners. Still, China and the U.S. are Taiwan's biggest trading partners. And trade with the U.S., the island's second-largest export market, remains on an upward trajectory. Hence the KMT advocates continuing the work on the U.S.-Taiwan initiative on 21st-century trade and negotiating a Taiwan-U.S. tax agreement. Says so. As the presidential candidates continue to spar, a survey released on December 30 by poster My Formosa showed 40% of those polled were in favor of Lai, 28.5% supported Ho and 18. 9 per back Ko. Beijing and Washington are not the only ones watching closely. The rest of the world is certainly paying very close attention to any development, anything in Taiwan that could result in China deciding to ramp up the pressure says Cole. At stake is not only the fate of cross-strait relations, but also regional stability. The degree to which Taiwan is able to maintain its stability in its area is useful and important for the region. Says National University of Singapore political scientist Chong Jo Ian. Taiwan sits astride major sea lanes, major air routes and also submarine cables, so any disruption will unsettle the links between Northeast and Southeast Asia. If Lai were to win the election, the likely outcome is for more years of greater tensions in the Taiwan Strait, says Nanyang Technological University Associate Professor of Social Sciences Hu Tiong Boon. If either Ho or Ko were to win, then the conventional wisdom is that this would lead to a lowering of tensions because those two candidates would say things that had been more pleasing to the ears of China. He adds, For a few voters, the burden of being caught between titans might be weighing heavily on them. No matter what decisions Taiwan makes, we have to consider how the US and China think. To be honest, I've grown very weary of this, says Huang, an undecided voter. It's almost as if, we must observe their next steps to get feedback before making our next decisions. In the long term, this isn't a good position to be in.